Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm uh, wearing a pin um, on my right lapel that was presented to me by uh, some folks today that appreciate veterans, and I appreciate uh, being recognized. Uh, I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force and Air Force Reserve, retired from that organization, and, uh, and I appreciated them coming and putting an extra pin on me today. We will celebrate Veterans Day on November 11, and I'll be making speeches, and, and uh, hopefully uh, many of us will be uh, properly recognizing those of us um, who've worn the uniform and taken the oath and served in that respect. Uh, but today I want to talk about uh, another group of folks, and those are the future veterans. And by that, of course, I mean the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, the servicemen who, who are uh, serving our country now on active duty, and make a plea to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, at both ends of this building, um, to get our work done at least for national security. Now, we're at a time of heightened politics, and, uh, and there are tensions uh, in, in this building, as, as there often have been. But, but at, at this critical juncture, uh, with so much at stake around the world, it seems to me, Mr. President, that we ought to be able to pass a National Defense Authorization Act, uh, which the distinguished uh, chairman, Chairman Inhofe, and his ranking member, Senator Reid, from Rhode Island have, have gotten prepared and we're ready to go on that. It just seems that we ought to be able to come to an agreement with the other body and get that to the president for his signature. We are now five weeks into the current fiscal year, and we don't have an appropriation bill done for the Department of Defense. We have to have the Authorization Act, which I mentioned just now, but at the beginning of October, we're supposed to have the government funded, and we don't. We're under a continuing resolution, a CR, and it sounds so harmless. We're just continuing the funding till we get all the numbers right. That's not true. Every defense expert in the government, formerly in the government and outside the government, will tell you that a continuing resolution is harmful to our nation's defense. It not only sends the wrong signal, it has us sending money in the wrong direction, and it has us not spending money where we need to spend it. We need at the end of this month, when the current CR ends, we need to be ready, Mr. President, with a permanent appropriation bill for the Department of Defense for this current fiscal year. I mean, just think of what, what we're looking at right now. Iran is the largest state sponsor of terror, and it's on the war path. Iran has knocked out the world's largest oil production facility in Saudi Arabia just a couple of months ago, and is attacking tankers in the Gulf. This is no time not to have a permanent appropriation bill for this fiscal year. Vladimir Putin's Russia is in a shooting war against our partners in Ukraine. The communist government of China is brutalizing its own people on the streets of Hong Kong, violating the One Nation, Two Systems policy. But that's not the half of it. Uh, Chinese dictator Xi Jinping is, is not keeping his re repressive ambitions at home, as we know from, from what's going on in the Pacific. And as my friend, the chairman of, uh, of the uh, full Armed Services Committee pointed out, the People's Republic of China has increased military spending by 83 percent. China has increased military spending by 83 percent over the last decade at a time when we can't even agree on the funding for the current fiscal year we're in. That sends a signal around the world. You best believe Xi Jinping knows that we can't get our act together and do a funding bill. Um, now, my hat is off to the leaders, both Republican and Democrat, in, um, in this body 
who've done their job and who are ready to go forward on the funding bill. But we need to join hands and actually get it done. And for some reason, uh, we have not been able to do that. I'm begging my colleagues, Mr. President, let's fund our military. Let's fund these future veterans who are serving on active duty right now. The current continuing resolution is doing real damage to our national security. It is harming the progress that we have already made to rebuild our military since the sequester, and wasn't that a disaster? It is harming our military men and women and, m women and making it harder for them to do their jobs going forward. I want to quote General Mattis, former Secretary Mattis, who said as Secretary uh, about continuing resolutions. He said, under a CR, it's not like we even maintain the status quo if we go into one of these situations. We actually lose ground, unquote. Mr. President, I would urge my fellow colleagues in the Senate and in the other body to heed the words of, of this great military leader. We are losing ground today, November 6, 2019, because we're under a CR. Uh, we've seen it before, and unfortunately, we are losing money and losing readiness right now. Extending the CR any further will harm military personnel in every branch in every day. The Air Force is short 2,100 pilots. Keeping the CR going would cut $123 million from undergraduate pilot training. Under a continuation of the CR further than the end of this month, naval training will be scaled back dramatically. We won't be able to fix dangerous housing that we've had hearings about and there's been a scandal about in the press. We won't be able to, con to attend to that because we're working under a continuation of last year's old-fashioned numbers. Vital research and development programs will go uh, unbegun. And um, not only that, keeping a CR going doesn't, not, not only doesn't uh, save money, it actually costs us money because we're spending dollars on programs that we have decided not to be involved in anymore. We want to, we want to move in a different direction. The House and Senate leaders have decided to do that. Members of the Pentagon have decided to do that. But under CR, we're forced to keep spending money on programs we don't need anymore. According to General Martin, Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, delays and misallocated funds cost $7 billion every month. And that's just for the Army. Uh, Mr. President, we have an opportunity to, to correct this. Or we have an opportunity to waste another $20 billion by year-long CR. I am urging the American public to make it known to those of us at Veterans Day programs uh, this weekend and next week. I'm urging my colleagues to stress this when they talk to the public. There are there are appropriation bills that are not yet worked out, but for heaven's sake, let's at least do the bill that pays the troops, that sends a signal to the rest of the world in these trying times that we are at least going to fund our Defense Department and our future veterans who are on active duty and who've taken the oath today, that we'll do them in a modern and, uh, and timely fashion. We're five weeks late. Let's don't make it another five weeks after this and another five months after that. Pass a full funding appropriation bill for our troops for the Department of Defense and uh, give them the type of representation and government that they deserve based upon their worthy service. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.